is, is just great. There is a lot of data that is being generated every day. So now what do you do with the data? That, that, that's what is the starting point before anything else. I mean, before even going into the need of having Python or need of having any software for that matter, what do you do with the data? So once you have the data, you start with a descriptive analysis. Now, what exactly is a descriptive analysis? Descriptive analysis is what happened, what has happened in the past. So as you can see, the as we go forward, the level of difficulty starts increasing and the value for the company also starts increasing. And until this point where we are in descriptive analysis, we are just looking at the hindsight. We are looking at what has happened in the past. So descriptive analysis is you have your data of the past. Now you are looking at what has happened. How much of the sales did I generate last year? How much of the uh, uh, how much of uh, claims came in the last year? What is the premium that I collected last year? What are the major statistics of the year and what insights can I generate from the data? So now where descriptive analysis exactly helps you, your, your descriptive analysis helps you when you need to find out a problem statement that what exactly is the problem that I'm going to solve. So for that, you need a descriptive analysis. Now this descriptive analysis, this can be performed either in Excel or you can use dashboarding and use your softwares like Microsoft Power BI or your Tableau for generating visualizations and then coming to a problem statement from that. Or you can use traditionally SAS for that or you can use Python for that. I mean, I mean you can use unimaginable softwares for that. But I personally prefer using Microsoft Power BI or Tableau because from dashboards and visualizations you reach to a problem faster and and then you can always have your data loaded in python very easily that's something you will learn but then yes i personally use dashboards to start with the descriptive analysis now when i have done my descriptive analytics i have actually reached to a problem that this is the problem now the thing is that might look like a problem to me but that might not be a problem to anyone else. So what I'll do is I go to my colleagues, I go to the management and I tell them that, look, this is what is the problem that I think is there. Now, once they think it's a problem, uh, then I start and go to the next step. So now if I realize that there is a problem, next step comes is diagnostic analysis. Now diagnostic analysis is why did it happen? I think there's some misspelling there, but then yes, why did it happen? So uh, that's something where your domain expertise comes into picture. And when your domain expertise comes into picture, you try to find out that why did that problem occur? If I had low sales last year in a particular region, why did I have low sales in that particular region? Now from your insights, you are delving deep into the problem and this does not require use of softwares or anything else. This is purely based on your domain knowledge and on the data that you have and the initial descriptive hindsight information that you have generated. This is more of a qualitative analysis of data where you are going into the depths of the quality of the data and also the, the uh, and also trying to understand what why exactly did it happen. Now once you know why did it happen, the next step is the predictive analysis where you go and try to find out Okay, now if this has happened, I know why this has happened. Now, what will happen in the future? So what will happen in the future is somewhere where you will need to come into the software part of it, the technology part of it. And then you use your certain algorithms in Python or you can use, I mean, there are N number of softwares and there are N number of things which you can used just to perform your predictive analytics. I personally prefer using Python and I'll come to the reasons of it later, but then I'm just giving you a complete overview of the process as it happens. And then once I have done my predictive analytics that, okay, this is going to happen, then comes the most difficult and the most value adding stage of the business. How can we make it happen? 
now how can we make it happen is more of what you what you decide with your management and what you give the domain specific inputs into it or maybe you can use some machine learning algorithms to find okay this is going to happen now how to make it happen you can have a starting point but then you there can't be any analysis which you can do in certain softwares that's where your domain knowledge comes into picture and therefore i've kept it out of these two loops and i have uh, taken it into as something called prescriptive analytics and that's the highest stage of optimization where you optimization something so it goes from hindsight insight to foresight from a descriptive analytics to prescriptive analytics now if i if, if i give you an example uh, descriptive analytics would be like how much goals has messi scored in the last year that is your descriptive analysis now your diagnostic analysis is why did he score this much amount of goals last year if it was high or it was low then you reach to a next stage of predictive analysis where you are like okay how many goals will messi score in the world cup and once you have an answer to that the next stage is how can you make messi score that much amount of goals in the world cup so 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 that's how you have, you reach from a problem statement to a problem answer and your cycle analytic cycle completes so this is the start of your analytic cycle this is not the end of your your cycle but a optimized cycle where then you keep on updating whatever final product it is that you have used so this is more more into analytics now so yes so you can type down uh, and i'm going to download and i'm going to distribution you can click on the first link and then you can download anaconda from here which are if you are using windows 64 bit from here 32 bit from here if you are using mac then from here if you are using linux then from here it's just like a simple software installation and you can simply install your uh, you can simply install your software so you can just click on it and then it will give you the installation link and just like you download any other application i i, I mean i expect every one of you to know how to install an application in a computer i mean that that's the most basic thing so yeah you can download um, anaconda from here once you have downloaded anaconda from that uh once you have downloaded anaconda from there I'll show you how an anaconda looks like. There will be something called anaconda navigator, which will come. It will open a C console, and then it will come. I'll just show you in a second. It will take some time to load initially. It takes generally one to two minutes to load, depending on your RAM size. There might be problems on Windows Seven. I will share my screen just wait a second. There might be problems on Windows Seven. uh once you are trying to download it so I, i mean people do face problem with windows 7 i've seen a lot of people complaining to me about that so i mean try to i expect everyone to have windows 8 or 10 i mean at least 8 using at least windows 8 so yes uh, once you have uh yeah so once you download anaconda and you all can see my screen right uh, my screen is visible to all of you so you can see my screen right so once you download anaconda and you search in your search bar anaconda navigator this will be like this anaconda navigator and then you open your anaconda navigator it has pycharm r studio spider console you can use either jupiter lab or jupiter notebook one of these you will never launch anaconda navigator i'm just showing you this is how your anaconda navigator looks like this and your python always works on some environments and because it is working on environments you will see a base environment but then you can always build your virtual environments here and then you can after clicking at create it does in 30 40 seconds you can keep on adding your uh, uh environments which you need for uh, neural networks and all other advanced stuff but in this introductory course this base environment will suffice and uh, this so this is basically how your anaconda navigator looks like and 
where you will code is basically in your you just type jupyter and your you double click on the jupyter notebook your console will open and then this jupyter notebook will open in a web browser so this jupyter notebook it will in the end open in your web browser initially it might take some time but then yes it always opens in your web browser or you can also launch your jupyter lab or your jupyter notebook from here you can always launch it from here or you can always click on your jupyter notebook and then it should load in your yeah so therefore this is how you, the initial page for your uh, notebook looks like then th th this is basically the directory where you have installed your anaconda so it, it is just showing on your if you see here it is just showing your uh, screen and it's it's just showing your directory where you have installed your anaconda so you, you just whenever you start to uh, uh, code you just do nothing you just click on new and then you open a python notebook or if you want to upload anyone else's notebook you just click on upload just click on notebook the notebook comes you click on it and it gets open so uh, therefore before this uh, there are uh, there are versions of python python 2.x 3.x python 2 has been outdated python 2 is uh, uh, not used anymore in the market a very few companies are using it who had already uh, were already into python before 2008 but yes python 3 came in 2008 and going forward python 3 is the only way forward so make sure your version is python 3.x uh, it can be 3.1 2 3 4 5 6 hardly matters there are not much differences but it should be python 3.x so once you open your notebook notebook this is how your notebook looks like so this is how your notebook looks like. So just to test whether your notebook is working or not, you simply type whether, yeah, it's giving me an input and an output, therefore it, it's, it's working. So therefore that's how your Python looks like. So once you uh, download Anaconda, after going Anaconda, just uh, go through Anaconda once, I mean, you don't even know to go through that, just type Jupyter, open a Jupyter notebook, open a new file, and then try to write a code. If you get an output, this means you're uh, Python, uh, uh, your the, the Jupyter is installed properly and your Python is working. So if someone has still not understood how to use it, you just click on Jupyter, you click on a new and Python 3. That's how your new notebooks look, look, looks like.